from the great halls of their house, there are assembled three who hope to one day be the world's greatest driving heroes. Created from the cosmic legends of the universe comes our team captain, the Vision, Bill Fisher. Their soon-to-be Wonder Woman, Vicki Fisher. Our Captain Marvel and head flight trainee, Jennifer Scripchuk. And our Batman, the master of tools, gadgets, and all things mechanical, our mild-mannered soon-to-be billionaire, Alan Danvers. Their mission, to fight injustice, share what is right and wrong, to get you out of your house and come out racing with them, and serve all mankind. They are the Garage Heroes in Training Team. Captain's Log Supplemental. Miss Vicky. Yes, sir. You know what? What? You know, I've been thinking about this Sentinel system. Yeah. Tell me about the Sentinel system. So what I was thinking was we have the one car that's got the aim dash that's slowing us down. Because mm-hmm. installing the aim dash is actually it probably is easy, but it's quite hard the first time. And we haven't figured that out yet. The Sentinel system is really easy to set up. So what I was thinking was, why don't we put it in the uh, Lemons car? And we'll worry about the AIM data information separately. And we'll, we'll kind of break it down into a project. Because then we'd have the motorsports video system that we really, really want. And we'd be able to stream it. We just won't have all the data inside. But we have the data ex- outside, so we can combine them later. But I think that's a really good solution. So what does the, what does this uh, Sentinel system do? Well, w- if it had the aim data, it would have all the data on the screen and you could see all their telemetry and everything live. But we'd be able to not only record it for viewing after the race, but we could actually watch our car during the race. Ooh, like on the monitor and everything? On a monitor? Or if you were at home and I was at a track or if you were at the track and I was at home, you know, depends depends on who gets the little short straw, but we'd be able to watch each other. You know, it's something I've always wanted to do. And you know what? If you're driving, you know what you can do on the aim, on the Sentinel system? What's that? You can communicate to me with your hands and I can't do a thing about it. <laughs> Even better. <laughs> <laughs> so, you know, if you need to give a wave or a jersey wave, whatever you need. We could save it and see it on the screen. And then you can have up to three different cameras and it'll have picture in picture. You'll have the basic main shot out the front window and then two cameras where you put them wherever you want. One could be on the driver or one could be on the rear view. It's kind of cool. Then we can upload it onto YouTube. We could. We could bore millions of people on YouTube. I love it. All right. Very well. You know what's uh, the only downside I see about this? 
but your mom and my mom are going to be panic stricken the entire weekend watching this thing to see if everything's going well. This is true. We probably shouldn't tell them. I like the idea of having a sentinel. Mm -hmm. Well, luckily we have one. maybe two depends on how things go. We're going to try. All right. That sounds like a plan. That's the project. We got to get that ready for the next race. Sounds great. All right. Very well. Thank you, ma'am. Uh, we have the potential uh, new question for Ben Ben Dawson. Ben Dawson, is there a way we could ask you questions about racing? Absolutely. That's why I'm here. Here? Where are we? Well, we're all in my garage down in Arkansas, where I live. Oh, okay. <laughs> <laughs> nice to, I, it's nice, I've been nice there. To be there. It's a very nice it's place. Nice to, Nice to have you all right right here in my garage. It's so cool that we could all get together. That's right. No, no, no expenses spared. You know. <laughs> you know. Yeah, we chopper. Yeah. We chopper. We chopper build down <laughs> <laughs> by himself. I got to tell you, the beer is ice cold in Ben's garage. Right. <laughs> I've heard. I've heard rumors. Is. I know where the go kart place is right by there, though. Anyway. Oh yeah. Yeah. All right. So we have a question. And okay. this one, we need to go over what the concept is, and then the concept is threshold breaking. Tight. I love it. And one of my favorite should, ways you, to do it. should you do it at every turn? Oh, yeah. Great. And great how question. do you know if not? <sighs> you want to give cool. threshold breaking a run there, Mr. Dawson? Yes. Uh when I, like the first time I had an instructor tell me to threshold break, it was probably my second or third DE weekend. And this guy was talking about threshold breaking. And for some reason, I thought he meant like either work your way up to the threshold with your throttle application, like start slow, you know, start with light pressure and then work your way up to the threshold or start at the threshold and you know, like work your way off of it, which the second one is more likely, more, more like the real one. The other. But actually the term threshold breaking is just refers to, applying brake pressure that puts you at the threshold of locking up the tires or at the threshold of engaging the anti-lock brake system, the ABS. Um, so you want to be right at the threshold of adhesion between the track surface, your tires, and how, how much grip your, your brakes have trying to slow the tire down without sliding the tire or starting to, to engage the analog brakes. So that is the threshold. And the ideal of threshold braking is to stomp that pedal and be right on the threshold as soon as you stomp the pedal or as close to that moment as you can. Miss Vicky, what do you think? How do you how do you like Ben's Ben's uh, definition there? I like Ben's definition. Do you? It does, so does that mean every time you walk up to door, you stop? Yes. Because <laughs> you're, yeah. you're you're getting to the threshold and you you've got to stop. That's, That's right. right. You That's get right. to the threshold. You know, stop. I still yeah yeah. You know that that whole threshold breaking it's still tricky for me. <laughs> it's not easy to do, but that's that's the ideal. It's, it's hard to do. But the idea is hard to do without messing yourself or the car up or the tires up. But that's what that's the ideal that people are pointing toward when they say you should threshold brake here. So that's a great example of something, the kind of braking that you're likely to be doing at the end of a straightaway, you know, heading into a, to a tight turn, something like that. You're likely to be using threshold braking. Um, right. and, 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 and I, if, I don't know if you're ready to start talking about whether you want to always do it. No, that, no that's I, what it is. I'm going to make fun of Vicky. I mean, yeah. uh, I've got a question for Jeremy. Uh, uh, Jeremy, is threshold braking hard to do in a car that has ABS? Car that has ABS? Yes. No. No. Oh, really? Why is that? Because the ABS system is going to kick in and not allow the brakes to, well, theoretically not allow the brakes to lock up. So it's, it's a lot easier to learn and practice threshold braking in a car with ABS. Um, How would you do that? You're going to late brake and hit the brakes as hard as you can uh-huh. and get a good feeling for that. And, if the, and see and what if the, the car does. And if the pedal feels like the thumper from the Bambi movie, what's that yep. tell you? That means you are have exceeded. You're, you're just past the threshold of braking and your ABS is kicking in. So you want to back off that brake pedal just a little tiny bit. So it's not doing that. Okay. Well, it can also mean you're way past the braking capacity. You know yes. what I mean? We, when, we say, <laughs> when we say late braking in the corner and then track for some ABS, we don't mean like 
you used to break at the four. Now try breaking at the one and jump on the pedal as hard as you can. You're still gonna over. You're still gonna overshoot the corner and be off the track. We we talk right. about that. You want you want to find your ABS. Maybe start at your normal breaking point, but break a little bit harder. You know, just break a little more uh, uh, artificially harder than you normally would, just to feel that break, the ABS come in, and sort of feeling really engaged, which is still gonna make the corner, but. You know, from that point, you can, I would work it up a little bit to where I would eventually be trying to break a little bit deeper. But I just want to put that caveat out there that if you're trying your ABS for the first time, don't also try to knock three corner boards off of where you used to break. Right, right. You want to start <laughs> when you're learning how to threshold break, you want to start breaking at your normal breaking point. Right. Whether right. it's the, the four or the five or the six, don't wait till the one to do it. No, that's not, that's yeah. absolutely not what I'm saying. Yes. Yes. And, and it's it, 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 what you, it, you you made another point too that I wasn't thinking about too. But you know, your your approach that you described implies being patient with the process, which I think is something a lot of people get frustrated and lost in. If, if trying to trying to move the brake zone in or trying to compress the brakes, your braking zone or getting in touch with the true meaning of threshold braking, if it doesn't work the first time or the first ten times, keep working at it. It's a it's a lofty ideal, and it's not something that's easy for most people to get into. I mean, there are plenty of racers who are fairly successful racers who aren't great breakers. You know what I mean? So it's, it's, I, I think it's tough. And you need to give yourself plenty of space and time to try to figure it out. Don't beat yourself up when it's not going great. I mean, eventually once you start to get into it, you're going to start knocking a bunch of time off your last because you're going to be breaking deeper and deeper. And it, and it really does work, but give yourself time to accomplish it. Right. And that's one of the huge benefits of threshold breaking is you're going to take a lot of time off your, uh, your lap time. Oh, yeah. But like with, with some of my students, when I'm teaching a more advanced student, I want them to only work on braking throughout the entire day. So if we go to an HPD on a Saturday and, I, and I'm working with a student, okay, I'll pick one or two things with an a more advanced student, obviously. And, uh, okay, we're only going to work on braking today. That's it. I don't care about your corner entry. I don't care about anything else. We are going to work on braking. And that's it. We spend a whole day working on braking. And that's, you build up to that. You know, you work on it, you're patient, and you build up to that. Okay, so the correct answer. <laughs> <laughs> All right, here we go. <laughs> is if you're trying to learn how to threshold break, and you're you're breaking right now at the four. We're just going to say pretend it's at the four, and especially if you have an a, a, uh, ABS car. When you're learning how to threshold break, you break at the four and a half until you feel the pedal vibrate. Because huh? then there's then there's no issue about worrying that you're going to go on too fast to the turn. You won't be able to stop. You know you can stop. You have to know how hard you can hit the brakes. Right. So take all the pressure off of not being able to make the turn. Take the turn out of the way. Just break it to four and a half or to five. I don't care. Break it to ten. I could care less unless there's somebody behind me. I don't care where you break. Learn what threshold breaking is. And then bring it closer to the turn, the specific turn you're going to practice your threshold breaking on. And then you'll see what the threshold is and how it adjusts your stopping distance and how you can affect your, your uh, process through the rest of the turn. But just take the pressure of making the turn or making the apex off the table. Mm -hmm. Back it up. Mm. Yep. Okay. Now, when you do that, when you're driving with your wife, she will say no, and she won't do it which is fine, but, that, <laughs> right. but that, that was the process. You back it all the way up, and then then you gradually inch <laughs> forward, and instead of breaking it to four, you'll probably break it to three or to three and a half when you're done, unless you're told no. And then you can know what threshold breaking is. Now, the, the trickier part, and I was looking for some help from you guys, is when you're in a non-ABS car, A, how do you practice your threshold breaking, and B, what are the bad things about learning how to practice or threshold break in a non-ABS car. We might as well cover those. Hit me with A again. Well, how do you practice? What's the downside of uh, threshold breaking in a non-ABS car? <laughs> I caught that one. I, I, I have only gotten the chance to race in a car with ABS just since we started racing my friend's E36 M3. So before that, the E30 we used to race did not have it. Uh, the previous owner, the, my beloved Ian Corp, had taken it out so he could put a proportioning valve in. So that car didn't have ABS either. My old Miata was a you know kind of a stripper base model, so it didn't have ABS. So 
I definitely can tell you about the downsides of what potential downsides of playing the threshold brake in a car with no ABS, and that is just you make a bunch of square tires. Flat spots. Does that make sense? Flat yes, you spots do. City. Flat spot city. So as you're working your way up to the threshold, you'll be breaking like, oh, I'm going to try, you know, a quarter of a brake marker deeper, whatever. You're going to just dig a little deeper. All of a sudden, you're like, oh, it doesn't feel like I'm breaking at all. And then you look in the side mirror and you see smoke pouring up in the mirror like, <laughs> oh, I don't feel like I'm slowing down because I am locking the tires up and sliding into this corner. But, you know, that's that's the big downside for me is is – uh, is that we just, uh, just definitely burned down more tires than I wished I had, but also I mean, it helps you pretty, get a pretty, uh, pretty good idea pretty quick. If, you know, if your wallet and your, and your feet can learn to work together and realize like, oh crap, that cost me a bunch of money every time I do it that hard. I don't know. Quick, my, my toe and my wallet got tied to each other pretty quickly once I figured out kind of where the limit was on how much braking I could do. But also, you know, even if, you're, if we're talking non ABS car or ABS car, Eventually, traffic is going to help you learn how to brake too, because you're not going to want to get keep getting beat into a corner by another car that's about the same as yours. So, you know, mm-hmm. ultimately, one of the ways you're going to find your context for braking and where you can and can't do it. And I've done this, you know, live on the fly with the, with the you know track conditions are changing. If you're in a wet race or something like that, you see, you know, you're on a race start, you see everybody hauling down. And they're like, "Whoa, that guy broke into so and so, and he still made it through." Like, I'm doing that next time. You know what I mean? It's it's a moving target where you can threshold brake through, you know, depending on conditions that sort of thing. So. You, you can learn to do it. You can learn to get a good feel for it, but it's not always, necess- you know, it's not necessarily going to be the exact same place, if, you know, going into every corner all the time. You need to be able to adapt and move your threshold breaking around once you kind of get the concept down. But the idea is for threshold breaking applications is you're getting all the breaking that car can give you, whether it's deep into the ABS system or just right at the limit of being about to lock it up and then, you know, take it from there. Once once you're able to effectively do that, you move your you move your beginning of, of breaking you know further into the corner, and likely you're going to be getting off the brakes better too. Once you kind of master the, getting on the brakes. And and just in case we aren't being absolutely clear for everybody listening at home, if your tires are sliding, your braking distance has just gotten longer. You'll, you ain't you, braking. You you're not braking if you're sliding. Right. So just, <laughs> so, so in case not. you've never done this. Sliding is not better. It's way worse. It is way worse. And that's why you want to start way farther back in yeah, the braking sure. zone. That's a great idea, yeah. Jeremy. I love that idea. Man, who thought of that? I don't know. Some, some <laughs> who, ad, who, ad, who, who came on the show and advocated for such a safe approach right out of the gate? I think it was, I think it was Bill. That, that was a really good idea. Blind yeah, nice work out of you, Bill. Hey, you know, I got to contribute <laughs> something to, go. to this podcast. <laughs> Yeah, keep coming, keep coming on this show. I think he'd probably be allowed to come back on. You know, the only reason I know this is because I listen to dominating the toss. <laughs> what, so, uh, what, what, what other concepts are, are connected to this? Oh, well, I, we haven't, we haven't finished yet. So, so we talked oh, about so how I'm to do saying. it. I know, I know, we, I know we, we talked, haven't. <laughs> we talked about how to do it with an ABS car. What would the suggestion be to learn without spending too much money? Right. Learn how to do this in a non ABS car. Suppose you're in a uh, an old NA or NB Miata, you know, from the 90s or early 2000s. Yeah. No ABS. What do you think? I'm in a non ABS car. What am I, what am I going to try to do? I mean, if you're the part, type of person who has to find the, the limit by running up and running past it, you can just you can. You can drive the car consciously, drive the car till you, you know, till you feel the tire start to slide and get right off of it. I mean, that's kind of one way to do it. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I mean, by that, I mean, still talking about the approach where we start our braking earlier than we normally had been. We just jump on that pedal, you know, mm-hmm. jump on it. Look, the caveat yep. always is make sure there's no nobody around you on track that's going to be surprised by your, you know, off, you know, out of time application. You, know, you don't want to be braking and somebody's right, right in your back bumper if you're going to brake in a weird spot. But make sure you have the space on track to do it. But you could try it. You could you could try just jamming on the brakes. I'm like, okay, locked up there. Next time I come here, I'm gonna jam on there a little bit less hard and kind of see if I just get grip instead of slide. You know, the other other way to do it is just work your way up to to try and harder. You know, when I mean harder, I mean pushing the pedal harder, right? Is that you know mm-hmm. we're talking about pushing the pedal you know yeah. as hard as you can until it, until the, until the tires break loose. So you know you can if you're if you're not the person who learns by running past the limit and working your way back to it. If you're the kind of type of person who needs to work your way up to it, you want to try coming around to that same corner where you're going to try to work on it. Uh, try coming around that same corner and, you know, just be conscious about it. I'm going to try it hard. I'm going to try it a little bit harder. 
we'll try it a little bit harder here and see how it's going and kind of see what you come up with. Right. And and be ready, listening, feeling, even maybe looking at the mirror, be ready to get off that pedal quick. And then you won't yeah. flat spot the tire. Does that sound reasonable, Mr. Jeremy? That sounds 100% spot on. Okay. Miss Vicky. Yeah. How are, you, how are you doing on your threshold break? You know, I'm getting better with it. You are. Thresh, you know, that's that's the it's end of the, the straight away. It's not the that bothers you. No. It's a self-preservation at the end. It just bothers me. Tell tell but, Mr. Tell tell Dr. Jeremy what your problems are and let, oh, let him let knows. him tell you. No, let him knows. let him talk you off this off the ledge because I do it. I end up in the tub. No, I'm gonna it. have to I already know and I'm gonna have to put I'm gonna have to talk her off the ledge in the car with her. Yeah, I think that's what is, it is. Yeah. So so and and we've discussed this on the podcast as it is, it's just as self-preservation, but I have been getting much better because I'm not focusing on the signs anymore. I'm focusing on the turn. So I did notice that our last trip out to Thompson, which as short as it was. Um, we, we shall not talk about Thompson. It was a bad day, except for Jeremy. It was a bad day. But I, I did focus and work on breaking later. Mm-hmm. Um, so you took that cookie off the top of the car. Yeah. Yeah. But, but, you know, I, I think that I'm getting much better with it, but well, to, to pretend people don't listen to our podcast. I know it's hard to imagine what was yeah. your problem and how are you working through it? Okay. So the problem is that um, going full blast and full speed down the straightaway, I have an issue with at the very end breaking late. I have a habit of lifting early, which I've, I've gotten a lot better with. But the, the issue that I was having is that I would start having a little bit of a panic, thinking I would lose control of the car. But I was also focused on the signs going into it, the numbers going in. And once I stopped doing that, a lot of that pressure came off. So, I mean, I look at them quickly out of the corner of my eye or I just glance over, but I don't focus on them anymore as much as I focus on the turn in and the exit now. And mm-hmm. whatever and whatever cars are currently in my field as I'm doing that. But there was this so, podcast I listened to that, uh-huh. that took away all the pressure of making the turn and it, by backing up your starting point yeah. to learn how to threshold break. That would have been a great idea. I mean, if you would listen to that podcast, maybe, you know, that would have been a, a way to do it. Mm-hmm. Just right. F- FYI. So self-preservation is not allowing you to learn the limits of the threshold breaking. Um, so take it yeah. Out. Yeah. Back up. So you got to got to kind of knock that self-preservation off. You got to leave that at the at the entrance of the track when you get there. Yeah. Well, that's gradually. what I'm talking yeah. Gradually, <laughs> though. You don't just. I, gradually. Uh, I yes, stop at the four. You need to All right. I'm going to move to the one now. Now, is no. it Thompson? Thompson is the one or is it? No, it's NJMP where at the end of the straightaway, it kind of has a lift or it. it it's the track rises so, up a little bit. Yeah, I don't no, think it does yeah. it at Thompson. Yes, it's Thompson. So Thompson's a great track to learn how to threshold break at because both of the major braking zones are uphill into the mm-hmm. corner. Right. So oh, that helps. Nice. It, it, it's huge. I think and, that and NJMP does too. Massive. Yeah. You know, that's such a huge benefit to learn threshold braking because you have a lot more brake pressure. Or, well, not, not brake pressure, but you just, your compression of the car allowing you to um, you know, reach those limits a little quicker and, and, and learn those limits a little faster, I think. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Oh, yeah. Yeah, breaking into a hill is magical. <laughs> yeah, it's like it, a it's, uh, bit. Oh, Ben, it's, uh, it's such an unbelievable track. One of these days, you're going to have to come out and go on that track. I'll, I'll get up there eventually. All right, so so I'm, I'm made it this far. I'm not in the tub yet. I'm pretty close, though. I hear All the right. water running. So... Imagine you're watching this movie in the 80s with Ralph Macchio and and he's learning. He's learning the wax on, the wax off, the, the he's learned how to paint the fence and all this stuff. And eventually he learns this one crane kick, right? And then he uses it every single place. Let's talk about threshold breaking. 
as <laughs> okay. what not to do every single place. Because I don't think you want a threshold break everywhere on track. I would say no, most, you do of the not. Time, most of the times you're putting your foot on the brakes, you are doing that. I would say most of the times. There's a few places where there's, there are places where you're going to use the brakes not as much to slow the car, but as to redistribute the weight where you need it to make the next section. Mm-hmm. Um, so there's definitely times where you're going to kind of brush the brakes or just kind of get on them lightly or maybe for a shorter duration just to settle the car back down. So maybe it will accept the rotation into the next element of the, of the course that you got to do. But, you know, you're going to use the brakes to slow down some, but mostly you're just trying to hunker the chassis back down because you want to fly through here. So you don't want to lose that much speed. I, I'm, I'm thinking of places like South Bend at VIR, for example, is, is one that I'm always thinking about. Um, what are some other places where you don't do like a full threshold set of braking maneuvers? If you have to brake in S's. Yeah. yeah. You know, where it's, where it's just yeah. a... So I, I think the concept that I that I've I've liked the best as far as braking is when we talk to Ross Bentley and he says 10 is full threshold braking. And then you make a plan for how what the peak of your brake is for each turn on the track, whether it's a 10 or a nine or a seven or a four. Mm-hmm. But you still want to get there fairly quick, usually. And then get off it and get back to gas sometimes whenever you can. Or throttle, depends on which way you like to do it. But to me, the threshold braking is is an event where you're going full out all the way as hard as you can without the brakes locking up the tires and then coming down. And, and I don't think I would consider it threshold braking if you're only going to like a five pedal. Agree? Right. Yeah. Right. Right. And I, I'll say like, like Thompson, cause that's the, the, the track that we just all came back from. Well, except for you, Ben, right. There's only really, there's only two braking zones at Thompson where you're threshold braking every other braking zone. You're just, it's, a, it's just a light tap just to settle the car, scrub a little tiny bit of speed. And then, you know, you're continuing your momentum through the corner, but really there's only two spots where you can actually like where you benefit from threshold braking at, at Thompson speedway. So one's obviously turn one. Yep. Where would the other be for those playing at home? Uh, turn four, coming into clubhouse turn. Okay. The 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 U. It, I, again, it's an uphill. It's it's basically an off camber horseshoe. But you are you're coming through turn three with just a little bit of speed scrubbed off and carrying so much momentum. It's it it's and that sh- that straightaway coming in there. You are you're coming in very hot, and the way the track is set up, you can threshold break into that corner and make that corner. But most of the other corners on the track, if you threshold brake, you're going to take too much speed off the car and you're, and, and you're going to slow your lap down. What do you think, Miss Vicky? I'm not good at threshold brake. Okay. That's what we're going to work on next year, Vicky. Yeah. I, I mean, I just, I just, the concept of it is still difficult for me. We need an HPTE. We do. You know, this year we've lacked on, uh, we've, I've, couldn't say lacked we just had a difficult time getting out to hpdes and i really am feeling right now that um i need practice there's and i need to have somebody more. in the seat yeah there's a couple more mm-hmm. take the mini cooper now we could <laughs> we can do that but ben i, I think you're, you're talking about something that I, I thought we'd i was hoping we'd get to and i think one of the places where you and I differ and maybe Jeremy is you said most turns I threshold break and Jeremy, I don't think that fits with what you do. So let's talk about what Ben does and see if we're saying the same thing, but thinking different or if we're actually saying different things. Yeah. I think it's more common for me to be trying to get every bit out of the brakes in the very last second as I can more often than using the brakes as sort of an aid for like, corner stability or trying to get into a corner so i'm trying to think my way around a lap of like road atlanta so turn one you're definitely going to threshold break right yeah um up through turn three is one of those places where it's not breaking as hard but at least i'm, I'm still starting you know that that little whatever the turn three that leads to the, yeah, little, the little right hand section yeah yeah i mean i'm still breaking hard at the beginning of that but i trail off pretty quickly just to kind of get mm-hmm. you know turned into the old complex 
but I'm, I'm breaking I'm breaking hard going up into five to get mm-hmm. turned into five. I'm breaking pretty hard getting into six. Seven. Pretty now. hard. Yeah, I'm, I'm waiting very late getting into seven. I'm jamming on this brakes. I'm because I'm, 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 also I'm gonna I'm gonna try to pass three cars between six and seven. Yeah, and then ten A for sure. Uh, Oh, we lost. We lost them. I think the track most part more often than not, my my foot hits the pedal. I'm trying to get maximum effort for the minimum minimum amount of dwell time on the pedal. Um, but so to me, it's more the exception of trying to just use the brakes as a, a, a chassis control item as much as just trying to slow down and get time. Because I mean, also, you know, when you when you are threshold braking as you're as you're coming out and rotating, you're still doing a lot of that same stuff you're doing if you're only trying to kind of set mm-hmm. the chassis or replant the weight. You're still doing right. a bunch of that same stuff. Um, it's just on the way in or out. But I mean, I am always pretty much just simply waiting for the very last second to throw some brakes on, and 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 get pointed in the right direction. Just in some cases, there's a, a an entry or a sweeper or something like that where you don't want to lose all the speed possible. You know, you're gonna you know maybe stay in the same gear. You may not break that hard, but at least for me, almost, not to most of the time, definitely more than 50% of the time, I'm, I'm at least starting my braking with a big threshold braking and working, you know, to me, to me, how quickly I release or, you know what I mean? That's a big part yeah. of it too. I, I didn't think about brake release as much as I ever have since we started doing this show together, but, you know, definitely the way I'm coming out of the brakes is a big part of it too. But, but they, most of the time, if I'm initiating brakes, I'm going to start with a, with a threshold brake break. You know, if you're if you're breaking all the way into turn one at Road Atlanta, it's a long threshold break, right? And then you start doing your stuff to, to you know the release, you know, trying try to get the car horked into turn one. I say long threshold break, not as long as some places, not as long as the back stretch, right? But still yeah. a big threshold break, right? Yeah. Uh, mm-hmm. I, don't, I don't know. Yeah. I think I think what happens on the back half of breaking uh, is is a lot, can can vary a lot more than the initial application, but for the most part, I'm usually starting a, a you know. Um, any kind of breaking thing with a little bit, at least a little bit of threshold breaking. So before we go to Jeremy, are you saying that your brake application rate, I don't know which way to do this because it's a camera makes everything backwards and nobody can see it anyway. Are you saying your rate is always or mostly threshold breaking, but your amplitude or the amount of brake may change? So you may, you may not break to a full 10. You may break to a seven or something a little less than, all the way full to full, but your speed and rate of getting there. So you're on a threshold while you're braking. I'm not, I, I'm a dummy. So I may have just missed what you said, but what, what I do is the initiation of braking for me is going to be right at the threshold. How okay. quickly I bleed, how quickly I bleed off of that. Or, you know, but how, how hard I'm, I'm, the quantity of brake pressure may be less. Uh, the no, time, I'm talking- the time. Sorry. Yes, the, the time, the dwell time on the pedal at that yes. rate might be less. Yes, but I'm going to start it. I think the important one of the important keys to threshold braking and is essential to understand is if you're using the term threshold braking, it means you got on that pedal as hard as you could get on it initially, immediately, and then you stay on it as long as you need before you have to start backing out of it and turning it. But that, my understanding of the term is that's what threshold braking is, is that you're on that pedal as hard as you could possibly be on it without being an ABS or a lock up the tires. So, okay. Anything you do after that is, is you know, the later phase of the corner or, you know, the end of braking, but you initiate a braking that way. So what I'm saying is most of my braking starts that way. There are some places where I don't, I don't want to lose that much speed. I just you need the brakes to manage the chassis a little bit. That's more rare to me than, uh, than the places where I'm going to really jump on the pedal to get turned in. So, but that, I can think of a few places where you, where you are doing that, but it's much more rare than initiating with a, just a full pedal and then working my way through whatever else I'm going to do. Okay. Jeremy, where are you at on the spectrum? So it, I, I think it varies on, on what, what you're driving as well, because Ben, ben made a really good point in, in where he was talking about where threshold braking, if you're staying in the same gear for a lot of the, tr- lot of the turn, a lot of the track, you know, there may not be a need for threshold braking. Was that what you were right. saying, Ben? Yeah, yeah so, like if, there's places where you don't want to lose that much speed, but you need the little bit of brakes to get the car to do what you need. So that, that that exists. I just don't. I, I don't encounter it that much. But then it's a it's a sure thing. Like you don't want to lose that much speed, so you can't be on the brakes that long. But you need a little bit, right? Right. And that's and where I was talking about Thompson, where there's really two spots where you're going to threshold break is like when we just raced there. The the El Jefe, the truck we were in, 
you're in third gear the entire track with the exception of the, of, of the one straightaway. So there's really, you know, at Thompson, there's really only two spots other scrubbing to settle the chassis, but there are tracks where you are going to threshold break every, entering every corner, like, uh, like pit race, you know, pit race is basically a threshold break every single corner with the exception of the back S's yep. and, and that's it. And the, the little, little kinks. Yeah. Well, you're not on the gap. You're not on the break of the kink, but, but yeah, you're, your threshold braking at pit race. That's a track where every time you touch the brakes, you are going to do exactly what Ben just said. You are going to brake as hard as you can initially and then melt off that throttle, that, that brake pedal as you're coming into, you know, the end of your braking into that corner. Right. So That's I think I mean. it can vary. I think it can vary track to track and, and, and vehicle to vehicle as well. Okay. So I'm not, I'm not going to steal from an upcoming article by my own Mr. Bentley, but there's, a concern that I have with a, with misapplying threshold braking in that if you're, let's say that you're threshold braking and you're, you are right on the limit mm -hmm. by definition, your car's speed is going down as quickly as possible. Right. Right. Mm -hmm. Which makes your likelihood of over slowing. Uh, I, know <laughs> I know where this is going. Yeah. Right. Right. Which, if Good. you're good, like dominating with Dawson, you you may be able to get away with more of it than when you're learning, like Miss Vicky. Mm -hmm. Because she, if she threshold breaks, when she finally gets to do it, what I don't want her to do is use the tool everywhere until she's good at it. Because you can easily over slow by 5, 10 or more. Oh, yeah. Which is worse than not threshold breaking at all mm -hmm. does that make sense that, I that makes that? i would agree with that um and and what i would say to that is that as you're learning obviously you want you want to take advice from your instructor as to where you are in your threshold breaking and where to do it when to do it on track what corners to do it at you know until you have become a very experienced driver like Mr. Ben Dawson, then you know, you know, th then you have it and, and it's just there and it's automatic. It, it becomes, you know, part of just you and the car. Does that make sense, Ben? Yeah. I mean, for me, I'm, I'm in the business of doing the absolute least amount of breakings I can. So uh, I'm letting off before I really probably should a lot of times, but you know, for me, I've ga I've gauged it right. If I'm hearing the tires talking to me on the way in, I'm doing a little bit of sliding on the way in, and if I'm sliding the car a little bit on the way out, that tells me I'm at the I'm at the limit of what me and the car can do. So whatever I did getting there, as long as the tires are telling me enough coming in and coming out, I feel like I've probably gauged it right. I, I hope that at least by this point, I'm not overusing a tool like threshold braking to over slow. But you're right; I can understand how that could be a risk. Like you start getting real good, like bam, I can really hit these brakes. I think that might be something that happened to me when I kind of hit a plateau right before I started doing time trials, but I had been instructed for a little while. Yeah, I thought I was hot snot on a silver platter, but I was really just cold boogers on a paper plate. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> <laughs> I, yeah. But I, yeah. Well, that, but, well know, that's yeah. not going to be the picture for this podcast episode, <laughs> just in case you were curious. But I'm, pr I'm pretty sure a symptom of my driving at that time was probably over slowing a little bit and making a really pretty corner, putting the car exactly where it needed to be. I, 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 you know, I don't think I had video in the car at that time, but I bet if I did, I wouldn't hear it very much out of the tires. So, you know, that, that, that was where I probably was over using threshold braking. I was probably a really good boy scout about look how hard I could break. But then again, maybe what about driving up to the corner, but not carrying all the speed through the corner that I could have or something like that. So I understand that, that being a danger in, in a driver's development too is, is learning to get really good, really effective with your brakes. And then all of a sudden you're doing too much of it and everybody's driving around. And so there's certainly a happy medium to be found. And I would, you know, I think as long as you're listening to what the tires are telling you and if they're talking to you coming in and coming out, you know, making nice good chirps and sliding up a little bit, then you're probably doing it pretty well. Yeah, right? I would definitely agree with that. So as much as we've disagreed on this, and, and we've talked about it from like 15 different ways, I think there's one thing that as far as breaking goes, uh -huh. that we can all agree. Okay. Especially if you're, you've not driven on track yet, is that your car can break way more than you think uh -huh. it can. Yeah. <laughs> yes. 
that's always one of the funniest things about taking like a passenger out who's never been on the racetrack is you see them over there they're over there hitting the floor hitting the full board on their side like like wishing they had a brake pedal and i'm like uh uh-uh, we're not anywhere close to where i hit the brakes yet that's always a nice time <laughs> i i have routinely had people get out after the first session when i drive students and you know demo drives and things like that and they're like why are you trying to show off and i'm like with me <laughs> Yeah, I'm like the car can break a whole lot more. I was driving like pretty nice because when I have somebody in the car, even if let's say if Jeremy and I go out or Ben and I go out or whomever, even if we're trying to push and trying to get me to go, if I have somebody else in the car, I am automatically notching it down just a little bit. Mm-hmm. I'm never going to do my full 10, 10. I've never done 10, 10, but you know, whatever I think I can do, I always back it down just a little bit because I don't want anything to happen with somebody else in the car. If it's me, no big deal. If it's my car, no big deal. Same thing if I'm in somebody else's car. I'm not going to go full out. But, you know, it was kind of funny. Why were you showing off? I'm like, uh, <laughs> I really wasn't. We, the car had a whole lot more to capable. I mean, you know, but I can't believe how close you got to that other car. I'm like, <laughs> this is <a> tea, buddy. <laughs> you, you have no idea, right, Ben? <laughs> Yep. All right, I'm sure we'll talk about threshold breaking again. Until Miss Vicky breaks it down, I'm going to keep doing this. Yeah. Cool. Thank you, everybody. Thank you. Yeah, thank but- you.